In today's video, I'm going to be talking about the best team in Man 21 for head-to-head -head and what you can learn about this from this team to apply it to your Mutt team as you're building your squad. What's up, guys? My name is Cody, and I want to welcome you to my YouTube channel. If you have never been to a YouTube video that I've done, basically what we do here is we make four videos a day that are designed to help you improve in Madden 21. We cover um, tips and strategies that you can use to help you get more out of the game, to help you win more games, help you make more coins, and just help you have a better experience playing the game. So if you're interested in the content and the videos that I do, I want to encourage you right now to go to the bottom right of your screen, click that subscribe button, and to the right of it is a little notification icon that will allow you to be notified every time we go live and we live stream every single night here on my YouTube channel at 10 o'clock Eastern time. So we'd love to have you come check us out tonight. All right, let's jump into this. So I want to start with X Factors. To me, to me, this point in the season, the best team in Madden 21, and I've said this all season long, and I will continue to say this, the best team in Madden 21 is the Green Bay Packers. And let's talk about why in this video. First and foremost, you have an absolutely, it is so important this year to me that you have receivers that can get open. And you got Devontae Adams. Look at him, outside apprentice, route technician. Man coverage is an issue, but he's got route technician. What that's going to do is it's going to allow him to get open better. Red zone threat, improved catching versus single coverage in the red zone. When you're in the red zone with Devontae Adams, you throw a post route or a corner route to get him open and you're going to find that he is going to make some catches for you. Aaron Rodgers, the absolute best quarterback in Madden 21, hands down, no questions asked. This man right here is the best, especially if you are passing the ball. If you want to have a pass-based offense, the only other quarterback that compares to Aaron Rodgers is, is Tom Brady. Let me show you why. First and foremost, pass lead elite. I talked about it earlier. Passing elite is the most important ability that you can have on your offense. If you want to throw the ball, especially a facing man-to-man -man coverage style defenses, pass lead elite is the ability that you have to have. You really do. I'm telling you, I've tried Dan Marino and I've tried Lamar Jackson. There's a massive difference in the two quarterbacks, primarily because Dan Marino gets the pass lead elite ability. Roaming Deadeye, perfect pack passing accuracy while standing outside the pocket. When you're rolling right, if you want to throw the ball, all you got to do is stop scrambling, and he can throw the ball across the field. No matter where he throws, it's going to have perfect perfect accuracy. Gunslinger, this is a little bit of an underrated ability this year. Faster throwing animations and velocity on bullet passes, very good ability. Very, very good, especially for Aaron Rodgers, who already comes with the best throwing animation in the game, the fastest throwing animation in the game. He gets the ball out. Really fast. All right. Jair Alexander. This man is a stud, a absolute stud in this game. Here's why. Acrobat, number one. Diving swats interceptions. Acrobat, in my opinion, one of the best abilities in the game, especially for Mutt because it only costs one ability point. The second a couple abilities he has is short route KO. Improved knockouts in man versus short routes. He's going to do a really, really good job at – defending the quick slants, quick quick routes, five yards and under, okay? Deep out zone KO. This is the key. If you run zone with, with Jair Alexander, you put him in a deep corner, uh, a deep quarter, a deep half, a deep third, any of those, right? Um, you put him in any deep outside zone. This right here is absolutely essential um, to your zone coverage. It's going to allow him to break down on crossing routes. It's going to allow him to break down on anything. He's just a stud. Stud corner. Next, David Bakhtiari. Match this guy up against whoever their best pass rusher is. Maybe it's Chandler Jones. Maybe it's Nick Bosa. Maybe it's Chris Jones. I don't know. Whoever you're, Whatever team you're playing against, if you put David Bakhtiari, matched him up against their defensive lineman, he is going to destroy them. He has all day and edge protector. What this basically means is he is going to be able to negate one of the defenders that you're going to face. So you, wherever their best pass rusher is, put David Bakhtiari in that position. Let him use his all-day or edge protector. I find either left tackle or right tackle is best for him. This is going to help you tremendously in regs because not every left tackle gets this. And what you're finding is people that use uh, the Cardinals or people that use um, anybody with edge threat, 
they, I mean, they, they will kill you if you don't have an edge protector player. Next, and this is the key to the team. This is why this team is better than the, the Bucks, in my opinion. Kenny Clark, successful block, he gets instant rebates. Successful block sheds grant a pass rush point. What this basically means is Kenny Clark might be one of the best defensive tackles in the game because he gets that ability, but he also gets inside stuff. Quicker, quicker run sheds against inside zone plays. When I run nickel 335, I run nickel four, or 4 6 bear, all that stuff, pretty much all of the defenses I run have a nose tackle. Kenny Clark is going to allow you, by the very nature of his position, to stop inside runs. So that leaves your job to basically figure out how do I stop outside runs because Kenny Clark's going to stop a lot of inside zones. He also has really good ratings for pass rushing and is going to be able to get interior pressure with that instant rebate. So whenever he gets a block shed, he's not going to lose a pass rush point. He's just going to keep block shedding. Very, very good ability. And then lastly, this guy right here is a stud in this game, Zadarius Smith, he gets out my way. Dominant impact block wins versus wide receivers, halfbacks, and tight ends. If you put this, if they're running I form pro stretch or single back ace flex close stretch, put Zadarius Smith as the outside linebacker, he's going to absolutely blow that play up. Mr. Big Stop, start third and fourth down with half of your pass rush points. On the downs that matter the most, you are going to increase your pass rush points with Zadarius Smith. And then the last thing and the biggest thing that I think is important is this is what he gets right here. Edge threat, and not just edge threat, edge threat elite, which combines under pressure and edge threat in the same ability, dominant edge rush moves, and increased quarterback pressure. This lineup is absolutely insane. And what we're going to do right now is we're going to jump over to the roster side of things. I want to break down a couple of other reasons why I believe the Packers are are by far, it's not even close, the best team. Whoops, I accidentally think I went into, into mutt here. We're going to back out of here or the yard or whatever mode. But the Packers are just so good. Like if you're playing for money, if you're playing for money, I suggest considering using the Packers. Here's why. Let's jump into the rosters and let's talk a little bit about why. So especially if you're a passer, if you're a passer, right? So first and foremost, you have Aaron Rodgers, 77 speed, um, the other thing is, if you look at his throwing statistics, he meets the accuracy for, uh, threshold for every single thing. He meets all the thresholds. The only thing he doesn't quite do well is middle of next year. I'd like to see that get upgraded. I'm sure it will because they're 3-0, and right? This team has been improving every single week. So, he has 92 throw on the run, 91 throw under pressure. I mean, just very solid rating. Second, this is the key right here. Look at these running backs. You got two running backs with 90-plus speed in Aaron Jones and Tyler Irving. These two backs are really, really good. Aaron Jones is a top-tier level back because he's got 91 speed. He's got 91 change of direction. And then route running's okay. Route running's okay. Catching's okay. He's going to be fine. Irving is a nice little speed back as well. Next player I want to talk about is the wide receivers. So wide receivers, this is the only thing that I would say if there was a criticism of the Packers is that they don't have super fast wide receivers. Um, but what you do have is you have Devontae Adams, who is a stud. Let me get into the ratings here a little bit. See, he beats all the thresholds. 90-plus route rating at every single level. That's huge. Absolutely huge. Okay? Nobody else does. So, eh. But... What I would recommend is Marquez Valdez Scantling being your speed guy. He's at 93 speed, and then if you want to, you can sub in. Um, you can sub in Tyler Irvin at 91 speed, but I'd recommend going with Aquanimus St. Brown from Notre Dame, 90 speed and six foot five, absolute stud. Um, I mean, he just he's a really solid third tier option. And then in my offense, we like to use. I have I have to use a tight end so that I can get the right audible packages. Um, do not use Mercedes Lewis. He's 6'6 six, six and does nothing else. Like, literally doesn't do anything else, okay? But the player that I would recommend sliding in his place, and you saw him dominate against the Saints, Robert Tanyan from Indiana State. This man has terrible route running, but he has 85 speed. 85 speed, 90 acceleration. Don't, don't skimp on the 90 acceleration. It's key. He's 6'5". He's going to get the job done if you want somebody else, either of these guys. But I would recommend Robert Tanyan personally. He's the one that I've had the most success with. Offensive line, you've got solid linemen. I mean, you got David Bakhtiari. He's going to help negate stuff. 
Now, this is where the team really takes off uh, to another level, the defense. So on defense, what I like to do, if you go over in here, we'll take a look at their finesse moves and pass rushing and all of that stuff. So um, you've got Dean Lowry with 76 power move, 75 block shed. You got Tyler Lancaster. These guys are nothing to write home about. These guys are nothing special. Dean Lowry is basically a really fast pass rush, average pass rusher. That's what I like about him. But when you go into here, check this out. 90 plus block shed from Kenny Clark, 89 power move, 82 hit power, like 93 play rec. This guy's a stud. Put him at nose tackle, let him go to work. Then this is what I like about this Packers. You've got Zadarius Smith, who can be a pass rusher in your nickel 3 through 5 or your 3 4 bear even. But you've got Zadarius Smith, pretty solid. Uh, his block shed is low, but he's got that out my way ability and edge threat elite. So to me, he's going to play just fine for you. And then you have Preston Smith, 86 power move, 80 hit power. Um, average or below average block shed, but still is going to get the job done for you. And then outside of that, honestly, you don't have a ton of great pass rushers. The next best one, in my opinion, is Rashawn Gary. But when you take a look at these linebackers, and my scheme doesn't use a ton of linebackers, but look at their speed, 86 speed, 86 speed for Burks, 87 speed for Summers, 86 speed. You got Kirksey here. I mean, you got some speedsters at linebacker. Um, all throughout this this thread but this right here is where the Packers go from being a good he team with a couple weaknesses to a great team that you can absolutely box people with I mean absolutely box people with nickel three through five remember nickel three through five okay and look at this you've got Perry Nickerson 95 speed He's one of the fastest corners in the entire game. Let me show you what I mean by that. We're going to go to all NFL. You see the fastest corner is da uh, Dante Jackson. That's the fastest corner. Very close second is Perry Nickerson. So you got the fastest corner in the game. Why that matters? Because when you're facing Tyreek Hill or you're facing players like that, you need speed. In regs, you need speed. That's what you need. So you got Perry Nickerson, 95 speed. Kadir Holman, 93 speed. Jair Alexander, 93 speed. Kevin King, 90 speed. Josh Jackson, 90 speed. You have five corners with 90 plus speed. Now let's take a look at their coverage statistics. If you come over here, you take a look at coverage. You see you've got, you know, okay. I mean, you got one lockdown corner, which is kind of typical. Um, you don't have anything else really from a coverage perspective that's anything to write home about. But you have speed, and I, in my, I'm just of the mindset this year that speed is the most important thing at the cornerback position. Now, this is where it gets really special. You have 93 speed from Darnell Savage at free safety. When you go to nickel three three five, you could put him at linebacker. Adrian Amos, you got 92 speed. Same thing. You can put him at linebacker. The other cool part about these safeties is they can play coverage. You see here, 79-88, 70-76. So their coverage is okay, but their speed is what's really special because you can basically come out in nickel 3 through 5, audible into all your sets, and be really, really solid and have 90-plus speed at every position because you got Will Redman as your user. He's who I would recommend usering. Um, you can also try Raven Green out, but I personally think that Will Redman's the best user for the Packers, but that is what I would do with them. They are an amazing team, amazing team in regs. A lot of people are sleeping on the Packers right now. They're dominating in real life, and they're dominating Madden too. Thanks for watching this video, guys. If you haven't subscribed, be sure to do that. You can see me play with the Packers every single night on my YouTube channel. We go live at 10 o'clock Eastern time. Let me know what you think the best team is. But I'm just telling you right now, the Packers are just balanced. They are so balanced. They're so effective, um, in my opinion. Uh, but also, guys, before we go, if you haven't joined the Discord, Discord is a great place for discussion. Uh, it's a place where we can have real-time discussion as a community, where we can talk with each other, where we can lab together, we can get our questions answered, we can help each other get better. That's what I love about Discord, and if you haven't joined it yet, you can click the link in the description to join our Discord server and start chatting in the chat, start participating in the discussion, start getting better, but also start helping other people get better, because here's what I know. As I help other people get better, it forces me to get better. And so if I'm helping people, my Madden game has improved so much this year because I've been willing to help people, been willing to take losses, been willing to play better competition, 
and Discord is all a part of why that is the case. Thank you for watching this video. Try out the Packers and head-to-head -head and let me know what you thought.